Okay, this is gonna be the shoe demo. And I'm gonna do this in real time. So I'm gonna go through the whole thing and then we'll do an edited down version so you just see the key points. So what I've got is uh, a still life of a boot, an apple um, sitting on a white plastic cube. Um, all, all you're gonna do is paint a shoe, just set up a shoe. I put light on it because I wanna set a good example. And as we move through the term, you'll see why lighting becomes more important. Uh, I'll talk about it when we go through the lecture on Monday. But um, what I've done, the important thing is that I've uh, created this as a square, and then I have to have the same shape on this. That's called the aspect ratio. So the proportion or aspect ratio, uh, if it was, if my image was the shape of the paper, then it would be different. Then I'd be looking at a line about there, but you want to try to have your image be the same. And in this case, I'm using my camera as a viewfinder. So I'm using this because I can't actually look at the still life. My back is to the still life. So when I'm doing the drawing, I've got this to look at. Um, and it, it helps me just by putting that X across the thing. It helps me to plan the page a little bit, which is, uh, which is important. Okay, one of the other important things is when you set up your water, don't put more than an inch of water in here because you don't want to have your whole brush soaking in water. You want the water to come to about there, about there on your brush, not up into the wood. It'll uh, destroy your brushes if they soak in water, particularly uh, acrylic and watercolor brushes. The handles are usually made out of wood, uh, which means they'll swell, they'll absorb water, uh, it'll break the glue. And uh, particularly inexpensive brushes, student quality brushes, um, uh, they'll come apart pretty easily. So um, since we don't want to break your tools before you get to play with them, um, or, or your toys or however you're viewing these. Okay, and um, so what I'm gonna do is a quick, uh, a quick drawing just for myself. So I'm at, using a little bit of this Rossiana on the watercolor pad, that's that color. Um, it's a handy underpainting color because I can dilute it. It's pretty thin and it lifts really easily. So it forgives me for making mistakes. So I can look at my, um, my drawing and I can see that the sole of the boot comes right down to that point and then turns right through the center. And um, kind of on a line along here somewhere is, the, is one of the other corners of the boot. So I'm gonna just use those two as reference points, that angle, uh, and then the center coming through that on its way to the center, somewhere along there uh, is, the, is the apple uh, at about a third of the page. So uh, I can tell that yeah, about, a, about a third of the page. So we're going to learn how to site measure, but I'm going to be doing that, meaning that I'm going to measure things on this visual. Uh, if we were site measuring from I, I'd be standing back and holding my pen like this. But since I have something in my hands, I'm just going to look at this and look at some proportions, like the fact that the apple, the height of the apple is just a little bit smaller than the distance from the bottom. So if I've got the midpoint about there, the apple falls just a little below that and just a little above that, okay? And the distance from the edge to the apple is about the thickness of the apple. So the apple comes almost over to the middle. So once again, if I find the middle point like that, uh, the apple is round, which means this distance is also gonna be this distance. Okay, so that means the apple falls somewhere in there. So I don't need to draw the whole apple. I just need to know where it's gonna fall, all right? So roughly like that. Uh, the boot passes behind the top of the apple and this line converges uh, down in here. And there's the thickness of the sole to take into account, which in this area is about halfway, about halfway. Okay, so this area will be in shadow. The other will be in light. It's a little thinner than that. Okay, and we'll be paying attention to things like where is it light and shadow? 
which is really all I'm concerned about. I just care about what's in light, what's in shadow. I'm not worried about color yet. Uh, that's why I'm using kind of a light, thin color. And it doesn't matter if I'm consistent about it. Consistency is the hobgoblin of uncreative minds, said somebody really smart. Okay, I'm looking for other things that I can measure with that apple. Since I have the apple as a size, I can measure things like the distance to the corner to the boot is a little less than an apple. Let's see, the distance from this other corner to the boot is a little more than an apple. Okay, so actually that was a pretty good guess. Um, I'm thinking 30 years of practice, this all should be pretty easy, right? Um, and yet, I still have to draw. <clears throat> so the... So the corner of the cube is somewhere in there, and it comes up like that. So this process that I'm using is called sight measuring. Or, but um, I'm eyeballing part of it and sight measuring for uh, kind of checks. Okay, so the distance down. I'm, I'm doing fine. I think this is a little wider. Okay, and I'm, I'm not sweating details. I am not worried about things like the texture on the bottom of this. Um, I don't think that's one of the exciting or interesting parts of it. I am interested in the way that the heel falls back so that distance something like that and i can see the bottom plane of the heel as well as the top plane of the heel and that top plane crosses that center line and the bottom plane not like yay um, it's a little too fat. Okay, so there's less of that. Shade, shade. just angles. Okay, and then one of the great things about watercolor, um, you'll see, is the ability to uh, kind of futz around with it. I can make corrections. So let's see. Okay, yeah, that's not bad. Um, we're going to play with watercolors next week, so um, we'll we'll be looking at some processes. But I'll just kind of, uh, if I do anything interesting, uh, I'll uh, I'll mention it. Talked about this comes down uh, for about that distance. Um, Similar to about like that. So somewhere in there. This starts to get more interesting. That um, the tongue of the, the boot sticks up just a little bit past that. Straight lines are easier to measure and see. So making things a little bit chunky at first will help you to judge angles.
and uh, I try to make an, uh, a few mistakes. Actually, yeah, I don't. I don't need to work at it. I will make a few mistakes. Can again, I'm interested in light and shadow, so the shadowy side of these things, I want to make sure that I'm indicating that to myself. Uh, details like shoelaces and such nonsense, uh, not important parts of this at this at this point. Details aren't important, but light and shadow are very important. Light is not a detail. Um, the only way that I can tell something is light, like the back of the boot is light here, is because what's behind it is dark. So if I leave out that dark area, if I don't include the objects around the boot, I can't describe the boot. So uh, be sure to include enough context to be able to see the relationship of the object in space. We'll spend uh, a bit of time on that this term but indicating that there's drapery back there, just an indication. I don't have to get fussy about it, but it's part of the scene. It's part of what's going on. Uh, the boot has gotten a little larger. I can live with that. <clears throat> I, I suspect looking at it's because I did the apple a little bit large. I can live with that too. Okay, so this is enough of a, well, let's see. I think I need a little bit of information about what's going on in here. Okay, so there's that form. Running to that center line. So there's a line somewhere about in there. And so I can use the end of the brush Almost like a printmaking tool. Right, for those tick marks and line work. Um, particularly if I'm looking for kind of a little bit cleaner mark. Um, and then I can come back and I can soften those lines, uh, add information to it. So one of the reasons why we're using this brush, it's extremely flexible. Uh, and you'll notice the way I'm holding it is more like a toothbrush, right? I can see if I hold my hand like this, uh, which is fine for some marks, right? That's um, it's the right way to hold it for a few things, but really not many. For the most part, I hold it like a toothbrush because then I can see what I'm doing. Uh, and being able to see what you're doing is, uh, is pretty handy in painting. Not being able to see what you're doing, less so. Okay, so I've got a, a, a pretty decent start on this. Uh, didn't take too long. I'd call that the, the drawing, the plan, right? Um, this uh, boot cup that comes up off the heel lines up with that mark. Comes across like that, passes that line, angles over, goes up.
just going to see whether what I initially eyeballed is reasonably accurate. looks like it's not bad, but I can do better. So the idea is not to nail things down, not to be too committed too soon, so that I've got room to make mistakes and improvements. And what I'm interested in, in capturing is the form of the boot, uh, not the details. Um, okay, so, uh, so that gives me enough information to get started so I can give some thought to whether, uh, whether I want to do this in color. Uh, it's certainly optional. You can do this in, um, in one color uh, like this. I could just continue to build this up in, in value. Um, but I'm going to work a little bit of color into it because, you know, because color's fun. But all you're going to be doing for this project is, is just, is just taking, um, taking a shoe or a boot, set it up and do a watercolor of it. The things to consider are you're using your watercolor, Yarka pan, don't use your acrylics, use this. Just spray them, a little bit of water to activate them or wet your brush and get in. But I, I tend to spray them because then the surface is, is ready. Um, have a water jar, uh, an old coffee mug or something a little taller so your brushes don't fall out of it. Use this as a mixing pan. And then uh, I suggest doing a light drawing. But um, this, is, this is our first thing. It's more of a get acquainted with the tools. Kind of idea. What I don't want you to do is don't do a drawing with a pencil. Everybody knows how to draw with a pencil. In a painting class, we're going to try a number of different approaches, but please don't use a pencil to do your underpainting. Okay? Um, we'll we'll get to all the other ways to draw, and we will definitely be using this pencil. But for this, I want you to draw with a brush. The only way to get better with a brush is to practice. So first, you got to find out how you're doing with it. Okay, and if how you're doing is lousy, that's great. It's an introductory class. Um, so we all are going to start where we start. Okay, all right. Um, that's, that's where we're going to begin. And um, I'm going to keep painting. I'll let the camera just roll and then we'll speed this up and, um, and take a look at it on down the line. Okay. Okay, this is the image that I'm working from. Um, a little different angle. So this is the sketch as far as I've gotten it. And as you can see, I'm moving through, just adding value, um, softening edges, and getting things arranged so that I can proceed with color. I'm starting to change up the temperature a little bit, and I'm gonna be working from the middle. So I've, I've painted the shadows, um, and then I'm gonna be moving from those middle values, uh, meaning not very dark, not very light, I'm leaving the white of the page alone. If I don't leave the white of the page alone, I won't have any light left later when I uh, get to that part of the painting. So it's very important to reserve the white. Uh, this works in any transparent process. And with watercolor, um, not only do you want to hold on to the light for as long as you can, so just leave it alone, but um, you want to learn a few ways to get back to white. So in the play process, you looked at uh, blotting and lifting color. So it doesn't involve any scrubbing. Just dampen with a clean brush and clean water. Just dampen a, a, a color a little bit and then use a paper towel to lift some of the color off. You'll see me doing that. It's, it's a good way to be able to lighten something so I can make pretty bold marks, I can move quickly, but if it gets a little out of hand, I can uh, back up. Uh, don't think of it so much as an eraser, as sort of um, just the ability to back up a little bit. It won't completely return to the white of the page, so it is still best to leave the white alone. Any place that you want to be white. So if you're painting white shoes with a white light on it and there's a lot of light falling, then you're going to be reserving a bit of that. So start by painting the shadows. 
um, this is something we'll do uh, a bunch of times, uh, you know, uh, you know, at least several times. Uh, we'll come at this a couple of different ways. But the idea of leaving the light alone when you're working in transparent medias uh, is a really important thing to kind of figure out. Um, it's also an important thing to know when you're looking at other artists' work. Okay, so once I've got that, I can move into those shadow colors. The shadow on that particular still life is filled with kind of a blue light that's coming from the left hand side and the light that's coming from the right hand side is yellow although it looks completely blown out and white in the background uh, there's a red apple and what i'm doing is just painting the shadow side of the red apple i'm leaving the light side of the apple alone uh, and that that idea will continue throughout the demo. Uh, you'll see me just leaving areas alone and then even lightening it a bit. So there I've lifted a little of the color on the light side. Uh, sorry about my hat getting in the way. I, I did adjust the camera angle for future demos, but you can see the work uh, occasionally. See the, the hat. The studio lights are so bright, if I don't wear a hat, uh, it, uh, it really messes with my color perception. It's like a surgical bay. Okay, so um, laying in those reds, you can see these are not very bright colors. Um, the colors are, are dimmed down a bit. I've added a little bit of blue and a little bit of brown, both to the red. Uh, so the colors start out kind of muted. I'm working toward bright color and toward the light. So I'm working out of the shadows and into the light. As the painting proceeds, what you'll notice is that it takes on a bit more form, a little bit more structure as you get the darker shapes in place. Um, but I'm not, I'm not doing them haphazardly. I'm, I hope you see I'm being kind of careful about it because it's very difficult to go back if you've laid in a color like deep blue or black. Um, those, are, those are pretty strong commitments. So uh, I use them after I've figured something out and only in those areas where I feel pretty confident. All right, here I'm cleaning my water uh, and brushes, so I'll step away from a second from time to time. Uh, it's very important to keep your water pretty clean. Uh, there's a bright blue light shining on the underside of the boot. That you can see in the background, and that's one of the things I liked about this angle. Uh, in fact, I exaggerated that just a little bit from, uh, from my perspective. So from time to time, um, when I stopped the video, I just sat down and looked at the angles. So I made some changes. It made the top of the boot a little bit smaller uh, proportionally as a result, but I, I wanted to see a little bit more of the bottom of the boot. I thought that blue was nice. Okay, so I'm laying in that blue light falling on the left uh, side of that cube as it falls in that direction, although the cube is white. The, the surface is not because of the blue light falling on it. And although I will soften that back a bit, those shadows, particularly under the boot, where there's no additional room light falling on that corner, it, it, it did get pretty blue over there. Uh, and you'll notice I'm painting everything except the boot. Uh, without the context of the, of the uh, other values, without the room around it, without the apple that it's resting on, without the cube that that's resting on, Without the context, the boot won't actually make sense. It would just be a boot hovering in midair. Um, and, and the assignment is to paint or shoe or boot. But um, you'll find that being able to do something like indicate that something is light, the right side of the boot that's showing up there, the only reason that appears light is because the color behind it is dark. So if I left that background blank, then any color I put in there, and I will be putting in some color, um, any color that I put in there would make the boot look much darker than the background, when in fact that side of the boot is much lighter than the background. And those kind of, of uh, ideas where you want to plan ahead so that you have everything that you need and nothing that you don't. All right. So I'm moving through and starting into the boot now, I'm laying in the values around the sole of the boot. The background is, I don't know, um, 
is it kind of gestured in and I dialed down the color a little bit so that it wouldn't become uh, competitive with the boot. I want the boot to be the foreground and the bright yellow light on one side and the bright blue light shining on the curtain in the background made it all very intense and I, uh, and I, I wanted to have something that was a little bit less crazy back there. And those are decisions you can make as well. Reality is a great departure point. So you can see what I'm doing is painting the shadows on the boat, not concerned about the details. I'm not starting with details. Um, I'm not even moving toward the details. I'm just chunking in the big, simple shapes of the shadows and forms. And then adjusting their value and looking at hard and soft edges. When I can create a soft edge because the, the paint is wet, that's called wet in wet. So if I have wet paint and put another wet mark directly beside it, that's using the wet on wet process that we discussed. Um, in the meantime, what you see is me using layers where I'm letting the paint dry and then layering another color over top of it. And when you see me uh, taking a little bit of water and removing paint, that's using the lifting process that we looked at in the play era, uh, in the play demo. Okay, so uh, you want to use those processes. Uh, everybody knows how to paint wet on dry. Uh, a series of kind of uh, sharp marks. Uh, it's got a lot of control, and while control may help you to feel confident, uh, it doesn't always lead to the same sort of fun. And part of play is taking a, a little risk. Right? Take some chances. And uh, so now I'm moving into a couple of details. You can see I put a little bit of the tread in. Um, the tread on the inside of my boot has uh, kind of closely placed notches. And on the outside, they're farther away. And I thought that was kind of interesting, that rhythm. Uh, they fan across. Uh, as I start to look at things, uh, things I might have over overlooked, like that chunk of value behind the boot and behind the apple right there. It's very important that that value be placed in. Um, and now I'm softening edges, so if anything that was uh, a little too light, I can darken it much more easily than lightening it. Uh, I can make colors bolder much more easily, so I'm continuing to layer with bolder marks. Um, I'm adding the detail of that shoelace and the shadow from the shoelace. A little of a stitching, but not a ton. Um, the entire painting took a little over an hour and about 20 minutes of it was working on the drawing. 